Dr. Jai Shankar, Minister for External Affairs of India. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. At the outset, uh, let me begin by congratulating you, President Kenyatta, for your outstanding leadership as the President of the UN Security Council this month. Your delegation has focused on some of the most pressing thematic issues, as well as led an excellent visit of all council members to Mali and Niger recently, which was immensely useful in understanding the situation on the ground. I also commend you on leading the discussions today, especially on an important subject of cooperation between the United Nations and regional and sub-regional organizations with a specific focus on the African Union. Given the context of recent developments in the African continent, the topic of renewing solidarity to successfully deliver peace and security in a changing conflict environment is well-timed and indeed most apt. I would also like to thank the briefer, Mr. Donald Kabaruka, African Union High Representative for the Peace Fund for his valuable insights. Mr. President, the international community needs to pay close attention to the African voice and wisdom. No one can know Africa better than Africans themselves. We have seen from history that offering external solutions to African problems without African involvement has not served the interests of the African people. This skewed approach needs to change. The change should begin here in the Security Council itself, given the fact that nearly 70% of the Chapter 7 mandate resolutions are on Africa. A strong and effective partnership between the United Nations with the African Union has to be the foundational edifice. While we have existing mechanisms of cooperation broadly based on principles enshrined in the Chapter 8 of the UN Charter, what is glaring is the fact that while African states constitute more than one-fourth of the UN membership, their continued denial of representation in the permanent category of the membership is a blot on the collective credibility of this council. While India has always supported the Ezulwini consensus and called for a permanent representation, permanent African representation in an expanded council, those who are responsible for denial by delay and perpetuating an historical injustice must be called out. Mr. President, in today's African continent, democratic values are driving efforts to effectively address the challenges of peace and security. This is clearly evident through AU's increased role within the framework of the African peace and security architecture and in the success of AMISO in Somalia as well as through its mediation efforts in Libya. The African Union has been ably supported by the preventive diplomacy and mediation efforts of the ECOWAS, of the uh, ECAS, the, of the uh, uh, Southern uh, African Development Community, SADC, and the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, each of whom have been critical in advancing peace efforts in their respective regions. We need to be cognizant of this reality and this spirit of burden sharing must continue to drive the agenda of peace and security. Mr. President, India appreciates because of its own experience that the root cause of conflicts in Africa lie in its colonial history. In terms of the immediate issues at hand, let me suggest five points for consideration. One, on matters related to peace and security, the Security Council should respect the regional approach adopted by countries involved and work in collaboration with regional organizations to address these shared challenges. Two, the spread of terrorism in Africa, as evident from challenges we face in the Sahel, Somalia, and Central and East Africa, is a matter of serious concern. 
the initiatives undertaken by amisom g5 sahel touch uh, joint force and multinational joint task force need more robust support from the security council and the international community we endorse the call of the secretary general to support african counter terrorism operations with sustained financing including through assess contributions three un peacekeeping operations and special political missions need to be sufficiently mandated and resourced to implement respective mandates our experience in peacekeeping in africa shows that missions often struggle to implement ambitious mandates peacekeeping missions should have a clear and well thought out exit strategy for while un au strategic partnership has grown over the years collective peace building efforts still lag behind in other areas a more meaningful peace build, peace building partnership between the un and au based on interinstitutional cooperation that focuses on harnessing comparative strengths to complement each other in pursuing the ultimate goal of peace and security in the region is indeed needed and five in order to resolve the issues that divide the unsc and au peace and security council it is important to re-energize and strengthen liaison mechanisms a3 members can play an important role in the same while deciding on the appointment of special envoys of the secretary general or the drawdown of ongoing peacekeeping and political missions it is important to consider the views of the regional member states mr president india and africa share a unique and historical relationship our approach to this partnership was enunciated by prime minister narendra modi in 2018 through 10 guiding principles we have worked with africa as per africa's priorities africa's comfort and africa's aspirations we believe that africa's rise is essential for true multipolarity in the global order and are committed to supporting that happening india's support has always been without any conditionalities or any hidden agenda this is visible in our 184 projects in 41 african countries implemented under concessional finance it is expressed in the medicines vaccines health equipment ambulances vehicles and food grains we have provided to many african nations it is evident in the vocational training and it centers set up across africa in the 50000 education and training slots extended over the last 5 years and the digital education health programs with 19 african partners our trade and technology exchanges are steadily growing in line with closer political and people to people ties with these words mr president i'd like to conclude by reiterating india's abiding and steadfast commitment towards an effective partnership between the un and the au we believe that this partnership is crucial for responding collectively coherently and decisive to prevent manage and resolve violent conflicts and promote peace and development in africa i thank you mr president i thank his excellency I thank dr jai shankar